my beautiful and intellectually curious love buzz, welcome back to my channel. If you do not know who I am, hello, my name is Nancy. I'm an entomologist, which means that I study bugs. And normally I'm taking your butt through Ecuador, showing you all the cool ecosystems that are here, showing you all of the amazing bugs. But obviously 2020 has canceled plans, has shattered dreams. So that isn't happening, so welcome to my YouTube channel. You can be part of the bug fam here by liking this video and smashing that subscribe button with the bell notification tick to all, you know, all of the grand things. I'm still trying to reach 5,000 subscribers by the end of December. It can happen. You can help. Yes, you. I see you. I hope that you have had lovely December festivities. I'm sure they aren't exactly what you thought that they might have been. Hopefully 2021 will suck a little less and we'll get back to normal, but I hope that you still found ways to enjoy your December festivities. Today's video, we are on the couch, we're just chatting, you and me, I thought it would be fun a while ago <laughs> to put on my Twitter and on my Instagram, give me some assumptions that you assume about entomologists and I will answer them. So that's what we're going to do today. If you want to be part of the conversation next time, you can follow me on Twitter and follow me on the Instagrams, here, here, everywhere. First, we have two along the same vein. Word Merchant says, I assume they're awesome. Does that help you at all? And Neil McCollum says, I assume it to be an awesome profession. I would love to say that all entomologists are the bestest people on the whole planet. And for the most part, I feel like we really are. I mean, we spend our time face first in the dirt looking at the Earth's creatures that most people don't care about. So I feel like we're mostly pretty awesome. But naturally, of course, you always get a few bad apples. I'm not going to say like all entomologists are perfect, but I feel like for the most part, we, we're pretty good. We're pretty good. I highly recommend this community. As for it being an awesome profession, it is to me. I love it. And I feel like most entomologists love it. We're definitely not in it for the cash, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> so we're definitely not in it for the cash. So I feel like a lot of people are in it because they love bugs, they love discovering things about insects, they love discovering things about our natural world. Okay, so now we're going to talk about some of the qualities that entomologists have or people think that we are. And one of the big stereotypes, and I get this all the time when I tell people that I'm an entomologist, they're like, but you don't, you don't look like an entomologist. And I'm like, what does that even mean? Like, you probably haven't even seen an an entomologist. You probably didn't even know what that word was three seconds ago before he told you. So there's definitely the stereotype that entomologists are old, white, also apparently balding men with ponytails. That is definitely one of the old stereotypes. Entomology is still very heavily male dominated and still very heavily white dominated. So that definitely is a stereotype and that's definitely how it used to be. However, things are slowly changing. We are definitely seeing more women in entomology and we are definitely seeing more people of color in entomology, which is really, really amazing. We have a long way to go still. I'm not going to say that we don't, but yeah, especially the older generation, when you think of your typical professor, you can think of like an old white dude. If you're thinking about the younger generation of entomologists, we definitely come in every gender, every gender identity, every color, every race, and that's really exciting to see, and I really, really hope that we continue to grow. We are underwhelmingly unrepresented by people of color, and especially women of color in entomology. And I really hope that the current trends in entomology, where we are seeing more women, where we are seeing more people of color come into and, and study insects, I hope that trend continues to grow because we really do need more diversity in entomology. If you are interested in getting into entomology, I have a whole series, I'll link it up here, about how to get started, some jobs you can start looking at. And, you know, I can't wait for in 20, 30 years when this whole old white dude thing is a thing of the past. Same, Cindy suggests that we all have really bad eyesight. I don't know if that's true for everyone, but that definitely was true for me. I joke all the time that I ended up getting into insects because I grew up on a one lane dirt road in the middle of Connecticut, in the middle of the woods, and I loved animals, but I couldn't see the birds or the squirrels or anything else that was in trees because I'm nearsighted. In fact, I don't even have contacts, so when I film these videos, I'm like half blind for you guys all the time. 
<laughs> anyway, so I always joke that this kind of left the insects and the frogs and the snakes that I could actually get up close and personal with. So yeah, I can, I mean, I definitely have bad eyesight. It's not horrible, horrible eyesight, but it's definitely bad enough that I'm like, hmm, I like bugs because I can actually see them. Let me know in the comments if you are an entomologist and you have bad eyesight or good eyesight. Let me know, let me know how well you see. <laughs> comments below. And my explosive fart, which is definitely a choice for a username, suggested that we float like a butterfly and sting like a bee, which I would personally like to think that is true. As for other qualities, just how we are, just how we exist, let's get into some of these. So Matt says, that they really love field work and they have to do a lot more lab work than they ideally like. I assume that about most disciplines with field work and lab work. So Jen talks a little bit on the same vein. She says, for a long time, I had this idea that entomologists were bookish and lab oriented. It's been a pleasant surprise meeting fun, fearless friends that have opened up a whole new world of wild, beautiful habitats and animals that I have never imagined existed. So that was definitely the case for me. I hate lab work with a passion. I really do not have the brain for it. I can't focus on it. I really, really love field work. But I know that is definitely not true for everyone. I definitely know some entomologists who really love understanding the molecular side of things, who really like being in the lab looking at a microscope. I definitely know a lot of entomologists who prefer the genetic and molecular work side of entomology. And I definitely know people who like the more social aspect of entomology, like people who are helping people with pest control problems or doing some sort of outreach and education through the internet or doing some sort of outreach and education like in schools or in public events. So if you check that jobs with entomology video I did, which I'll link up here, you can definitely see that Entomology is a really diverse field, and it's not just like lab work and field work. There's everything in between as well. There's even, I feel like was watching this one video, and there was an entomologist who, who like wrangled insects for movies. Like that was his job to figure out how they can get the spider to go from that part of the room into this guy's shoe, and you know handled insects for different movies and and Hollywood stuff. So like that's also a job. So it's not just field work and, and lab work. There's definitely everything in between, and I know people who like everything in between. I'm a field work kind of girl, but that's not everyone. So Happy Blimlianator suggests that it would take forever to walk with any entomologist. They have to stop and look at every bug. And that I can definitely say, at least for the entomologists who like field work, who come, come to Ecuador with me, that is definitely true. I hosted Bugshot in Ecuador. Bugshot is an insect macro photography workshop that goes to different places internationally to look at their bugs and take pictures of them. So we were at one of my favorite lodges, El Septimo in the Cloud Forest for one week. We had some participants who didn't even make it past the final cabins in a week because there was just so much stuff from the main lodge to the end of the cabins, which is literally maybe like a seven minute walk if you're like walking quickly. And we had some people who never made it past the cabins in one week. So yes, we must stop. We must look at everything and we are not fast. So Nusitanio says, not me, but a coworker used to think that they are weird and boring. I mean, we might be weird. We might be weird. As for being boring, I don't think entomologists are particularly boring. We always have like really interesting stories to tell about collecting, we're kind of like weird and quirky and have weird stories to tell about our insects that we're studying. So I would probably suggest that we're not boring, but, tr but like getting that out of us might take a little bit of effort. Now we have some qualities assuming our <laughs> innate intelligence, I would suggest. So Tan Wilhelm Nature says, entomologists know the ID of every insect you present to them. Mejia Maca says something very similar to Tan Willem Nature, which is basically, I guess this happens to all biologists, but people assume that as an entomologist, you know all the scientific names to all the bugs. Yeah. I have this assumption all the time. It's so hard. Okay, there are 1.2 million insect species. That is a lot. In the world, there are 10,000 bird species. That's it, in the whole world, 10,000 bird species. There are 20,000 just 
butterflies, and butterflies are part of a bigger order called Lepidoptera, which is butterflies and moths, which has like 180,000 species. So for you to just like walk up and be like, hey, what are this? I don't know. I probably don't. I might be able to get it down to family, but I won't be able to do that unless you give me a location because there's insects here, there, and the other place, and they all look pretty similar. And one of the things that will separate them out is their geographic location. You're from Australia and you're like, what are this? I probably don't know either. It's best to find an entomologist who lives where you do or find an entomologist who is an expert in that specific group. You got a beetle? Don't go to a butterfly person. You got a wasp? Don't go to a termite person. Pet Noodle says, they, they're more patient and attentive to detail than me i.e. counting the antennal segments on a three millimeter long beetle, emptying the moth trap for the 45th thousandth thousandth time. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and I think it depends on what you're doing. I, I found for me, I love looking at insects under the microscope. I think they're so beautiful. I actually reviewed a book called Microsculptures. You can actually see some high res images of insects under a microscope. It'll be linked right up here. And they're so gorgeous. I could sit there and I could count antennal segments on bugs all day long because I think they're so beautiful and so interesting to look under the microscope. Ask me to do a PCR where I'm transferring the same darn goop from one tube to another and I'm useless at it. No attention to detail. <laughs> but most entomologists are going to be trained in identifying insects. I don't think that many people are that innately tuned because that's not how human psychology works. Human psychology, your brain just likes to find shortcuts to things. Your brain does not like to sit there and count antennal segments. So if that thing is yellow and black, it's like, it's a bee. And whether it is or it isn't, your brain is like, well, that one time a bee hurt me and it looked like that. So regardless, if I don't touch it, I will never get hurt. Kind of trying to override that and then start to look, oh, what does its eyes look like? What are its antennal segments like? What are its tarsal segments like? Well, you know, what is this, this, and this? For me, I definitely had to be trained in it. I think you may have an innate ability to be interested in small things and be detail oriented maybe in general, but overriding, at least for me, that initial like, ah, they all kind of look the same. They got six legs and crawl on the ground was definitely something that I had to override in my system. And I feel like would be similar for many people. I kind of assume that entomologists will house their collections all over the place. And I wonder what are the weirdest places entomologists have stored their collections. So entomologists will not store the collection all over the place, and there's a really good reason for that, and that's because there is a pest called dermestids, which are a type of beetle. They're often called carpet beetles, but they will destroy your insect collection in a heartbeat. So you need to store them in boxes that are airtight. We have specialized entomology boxes to store them in airtight things, just like that, to prevent insects from eating them, basically. So if you're an entomologist and you have just boxes of insects all over the place, that's a good way for all your specimens to get destroyed and probably wasn't worth killing them in the first place. The weirdest place that entomologists may store their collections is in freezers. If you go to a friend entomologist's house and you open up their freezer, they, they probably have a bag or a box of frozen insects, and that's because before you can pin them and scientifically document them and label them properly, you have to keep them in the freezer so they don't decay, they don't mold, and they don't get eaten by those dermestids. So that you may find insects in their freezer. And as for like a random trivia fact, I remember in one of the entomology games, I don't, like I never played them, so I don't remember. <laughs> but basically some general's sidekick somewhere in history was an insect enthusiast, and apparently on the battleground, he would collect insects and store them in alcohol vials in his hat until he got home and could process them. So that's probably the weirdest one that I can think of. But now, I of course, I can't remember who it was or when it was, so take it with a grain of salt. So many people assume that entomologists love insects. I'll put them all up here. Everything from assuming that bugs are friends to that we must touch the insects to we must absolutely love them. And I would say for the vast majority of entomologists, that is true. We really do love insects. We probably want to put it in our hands and or on our face, depending how safe that animal is to handle. 
And it's just mainly for me, it's to show that insects aren't dangerous. So many people are so afraid of insects, but when you have a millipede in your hand and you're like, hey, look at the millipede, like this is its max speed. It literally does nothing. I've been holding it for five minutes and nothing happens. I think it's a great way to reach people and show them like face first that their fears of these animals are unwarranted. That doesn't mean that every entomologist loves insects or that every entomologist loves every insect. I hate mosquitoes, for example, and ticks could definitely do without either of those two animals. There are entomologists who mainly just focus on the lab work, who are really interested in what the genetics and you know, potential implications of, of insect features, biology, external morphology, etc., can offer science in the future. But they may not like handling the animal themselves, and they may not even like field work. So definitely not all entomologists like insects. I knew of one entomologist at the University of Georgia who was terrified of insects and didn't want to do an insect collection for her taxonomy class because she was afraid of them. So it goes always. I know many entomologists who are afraid of spiders. They love bugs but can't handle spiders. I know entomologists who just like bugs in general, but as soon as like the legs come out and they move too fast or the wings start flying, like they're out of there. So there's definitely a wide range of how people feel and like their animals. All right, love bugs, that is all the assumptions that you had for me today. And if you like this video, we can definitely do another one. It was so much fun reading all of your assumptions and hopefully I cleared some of them up for you. But I will see you all tomorrow on another almost daily December. We're gonna finish out the week strong. All right, team, I will see you very soon. Bye. Also up here, a video that you'll definitely really like and down here, definitely more other videos that you'll definitely really like. Got you.